who, who wrote um, uh, Frankenstein? Mary Shelley. Mary Shelley. Now, this is going to sound like a bit of a generalization. All women, <laughs> past, present, and future, are Mary Shelley. And all men are the creature. Look at a man. Look at him. Look at a man in the morning. What is he? A thing banging into walls in search of a toilet. <laughs> he is blind and he has an erection. <laughs> in his mind, the two things are related. I have no blood in my eyes. <laughs> He goes to work to do a repetitive task. <laughs> Takes a break at lunch to go for a sandwich. Sees something there to stir the little cosmos in his skull. He sees a woman. <coughs> it entrains a very complex psychological effect. He's, he's about to realize something. He goes, he dives to his own depths, to his own ocean floor, and clutches at that insight breaks his own surface. And this is the insight he comes up with. He goes, woman! Uh, and then he goes back to work <laughs> to masticate his ham patty, ruining the fact that he didn't get the beef. And then goes home to be told by Mary Shelley, darling, we're having the Jeffersons around on Friday for dinner. Jeffersons, what a day. They're our friends, darling. They're guests. They're going to be our guests on Friday. When did we meet them? You didn't meet them, I met them, and I liked them, so they're coming to dinner, okay? I'm just telling you because you live here. <laughs> you can spend the evening talking to Philip. You'll like him. Why would I like Philip? Because he's a very boring man, and I'm not going to deal with him, okay? So you can <laughs> have Philip to yourself all night long. Anyway, you wouldn't like uh, Samantha. You just wouldn't like her. Why wouldn't I like Samantha? Because she's very good-looking, and she doesn't wrap up warm enough. So I'll be talking to Samantha. <laughs> You can stay in the corner all night long and make armpit farts while we have the roast potatoes. <laughs> Post potatoes! Ah! <laughs> now, it's, look, that's because women are kind enough to tell you what it is you're going to be doing for the rest of your life. <laughs> so, I mean, I suppose the, you know, the, dinner, the dinner party is kind of the, the acme of middle class uh, life. Most of us are, are, are that, aren't we? I guess we are. Mm. Now, excuse me, the cake was fine, but I need to chase that up with some chocolate, because... Um, I'm eating the chocolate, and um, the truth is, I'm not enjoying it. Um, but I'm going to carry on eating it, because that's the way the mind works, you see? You tell yourself that the good chocolate is further on, deeper down, in the bottom. <laughs> Very much like when you wake up, and you think, oh, this is fucking hideous. I'll get up, things will improve. <laughs> <laughs> so, having made a load of generalizations about women and men, um, women, uh, women have to make themselves beautiful for men because Men are the ones who go on about female beauty. It's men who you hear say, oh, I miss Nancy. She had such dusky insteps. <laughs> Her knees were like porpoises' heads. <laughs> Her eyes were like lapis lazuli thrown into little dishes of utterly butterly. <laughs> you could hear her breasts as she walked behind you. She was an extraordinary woman. You don't get women banging on in this manner about male beauty. You don't hear women say, Oh, I miss Simon. He had such beautiful balls. <laughs> we call ourselves a liberal democracy, and there is still no platform in this society for the appreciation of scrotal beauty. <laughs> and the thing is, women do have to do all kinds of things to themselves, and they lie about it because of all the pressure. You know, women go and get their hair made bulletproof and get the implants. The silly clothes and the stupid shoes everybody wears now. You know these things. 
And they say, oh, I, I enjoy, I did it for me, you know. I, I, I like the fact that it takes me 45 minutes to get in or out of a chair. I've always wanted to look like a prawn who's being airlifted. This is a total lie. That's not the kind of thing a person does for themselves. You know what I did for me? I had an eclair inside an eclair. That's the kind of thing you do for yourself. Not getting fucking vajazzled, getting a little chandelier hung over your uterus. <laughs> so because the mainstream absorbs more and more different kinds of people, you know, who is outside? Well, I suppose there's extremist fundamentalist people, you know? And um, uh, you know, I've never really understood when, 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 when America, America's reaction to Osama bin Laden's assassination was not very politically mature, I thought, because they sort of, what they really as a country did was go, oh yeah, he's dead, he look at him with bullets in his head, he's so dead, he's dead forever. And that suggested <laughs> a people who hadn't really considered the idea of being bombed again. And, <laughs> I mean, that, yes, that, as, as real news, that was real news, not the celebrity thing I mentioned earlier, the royal wedding and so on, which there's an awful lot of as well. Uh, you know, all those magazines telling you to catch up and all that stuff, the friendly, over-familiar names of the magazines. Hello, come here, give us a lick, all that stuff. <laughs> now, there are all sorts of crises happening in the world at any one time, you know, with food and energy and so on. Now, I'm not suggesting we return to a Maoist China, you know, but if you got and all those people who read celebrity news and put them to work on treadmills generating electricity or whatever, as long as you let them hang on to the magazines, they wouldn't even notice. <laughs> in the context of being in the world, you know, and watching all this stuff happen, I don't think you, it penetrates a lot of it. I don't think you care that much about it. You know, in the end, what's going to matter to you is who you're with and, and what's happening between you. You know, you're, what's happening in your own kitchen. Now, I have a, a friend who's my age and single and childless. And I can't begin to tell you how much I hate him. <laughs> because he's naive in a way that men are if they don't have children. If you're a woman, you don't need to have children to be empathetic. If you're a man, you do. Because he still says things to me like, so what did you get up to at Easter? He forgets I have a family. If you have a family, you don't get up to things. I got in a sleeping bag, but they found me. So, <laughs> tell me all about what you got up to. You know, he's the single men who give you, if they have a friend who has children, they give them the worst kind of presents for the children. They give them those big plastic things that talk in American voices that you only ever find at three in the morning as you're crossing the landing to go for a piss. You break all your toes on it and then it talks at you. A is for apple, I love you, kiss me, fuck off! You're the only thing that talks to me in this fucking house. <laughs> but he is immature, you see? And what happens is that he says, oh, he, he falls in love all the time. He says, oh, I met this woman, she's amazing. Uh, we have so much in common. Well, what, what do you have in common? Well, we both like sex and champagne. Three days later, they break up. I say, what was the matter? Oh, she couldn't make a bisque. Um, <laughs> this doesn't really get to the nitty gritty of a relationship, you know? And it's difficult for people to relate to one another. I mean, you have to find somebody, first of all. And I worry about the younger generation. Not just because you're losing skills all the time, but that's okay, you don't have to worry. You don't have to write or speak or spell anymore. You can straddle a computer and lick it. It'll do everything for you. <laughs> but there are certain key skills you need that are being lost, like dancing. Y young people cannot dance. I know this because I got tricked into going into a disco situation. <laughs> yes, I said the word disco. <laughs> From the Latin, meaning to put the moves on a lady under spangly lights. <laughs> they don't know what they're doing in there anymore. I, the music is hideous, but you'd expect that, the sort of stuff that makes your eyes foam after about three seconds. But, <laughs> This is what they were doing, they, they, this. They look like they're being tasered. 
What happened to the popular classical dance that was established for all time in the mid 80s when I was growing up? There was nothing wrong with those moves. I did say it pronounced that in a French way, but never mind. <laughs> moves. <laughs> Do you like my moves? <laughs> the beautiful moves, you know? There was nothing wrong with this. What intelligent woman is going to resist that from a man? Look at this. <laughs> Cleaning the ovens, that was called. Or this. Judging the mice. These were the greats!